Hey y'all, this is Astro Doom here, speaking to y'all in my bed for the My Bed and Astrology Podcast. Alright, so last week I talked about how you can see if someone's beautiful via their chart, how being beautiful can be displayed in your natal chart or whatever, um, and that kind of goes with charm as well because you know I mentioned how like Venus represents beauty and charm and um you know it also represents like artistic value and stuff I might make a separate episode about that but today um what I'm gonna do is talk about how not how you can see if you are beautiful and through your birth chart but how you can see if you are sexy or have sex appeal so um as we know beauty in sex appeal is in the eye of the of the beholder but the interesting part about you know beauty and sex appeal and what we find beautiful or sexy um is that there's kind of an inner essence of it inner beauty and inner sex appeal that draws people in so it could be A person that is not conventionally beautiful, but they just have something about them that makes you go nuts or makes you feel like they're beautiful. So I'm going to talk about how you can see that through your chart. Similar format, you know, talking about how Deccans are involved, but there's different planets around. (laughs) So, um, but that being said... Um, that's what I'm talking about, and we're gonna get to it, or whatever, and it should be fun, like, I think this is gonna be a fun one, too, okay, um, yeah, similar format as last, um, weeks, um, and I'm just gonna talk about sex appeal and sexiness, all right, all right, let's get to it. similar to last episodes um then I talked about Venusian decans and how it's related to beauty and charm and astrology I'm going to talk about the decans of sexiness and sex appeal now this is interesting because there's two essences <laughs> essences <laughs> um two essences I think I, I think that's how, that's probably right of sex appeal there's kind of the masculine sex appeal uh, which is not necessarily like you gotta be manly with it i'll explain it later but there's the masculine sex appeal and the feminine sex appeal okay like like i said mentioned before that doesn't mean that you're gonna be like extra feminine about it or extra masculine about it um as in what society deems as masculine and feminine but it's going to be an essence of the yin and the yang when it comes to sex appeal and how you go about it. Okay, so the planet that represents the masculine sex appeal, you probably guys already know this, is Mars. Mars actually uh, represents drive in all different types of drive, including sex drive. So, you know when it comes to feminine sex appeal this would be represented by Pluto Pluto represents transformation death but it also represents the intimate bonding that someone has um, intimately connecting with others you can intimately connect with others through sex as well the thing is though is that it's not just kind of like this uh, more masculine jumping bones just come here and give me some love come here and give me some sex type of sex this is more of a 
making love, intimate bonding, really coming, becoming one with person. Okay. So I feel like Mars is um, expressive. Um, it's expressive of how much you desire someone, while Pluto is expressive of how much you love someone. So we're going to be looking at those two decades. Another thing that I want to mention about Pluto too is that, you know, I forgot how to say it in Spanish, but I know um, that sex, or I believe orgasm means little death. And so it's funny because literally Pluto represents death and transformation. So it was interesting how intimate sex is represented by Pluto in the eighth house. You know what I mean? So yeah, um, those are two planets that we'll be focusing on. Okay. Now, um, like I mentioned before, there's the Mars in Pluto and there's these things called decans okay uh, decans are kind of sub signs within an astrological sign so um, you know let's use Capricorn as an example Capricorn is a sign within itself but the thing is that there's these sub there's a sub sign between Capricorn there's three of them ruled by planets so d- degree zero through ten of Capricorn rep- is represented by Saturn. Even though Capricorn as a whole is represented by Saturn, there's also sub rulers. Okay, so just to make sure you understand that Capricorn is a sign within itself that's ruled by Saturn, but there's also sub rulers which are decades that are ruled by planets as well. So. Capricorn, uh, degree 0 through 10 is ruled by Saturn again, so it's double Saturn. Um, and then Capricorn, uh, the second decade, um, what you call it, 10 through 19 is ruled by Venus. And then 20 through um, 29 is ruled by Mercury. Okay? So those are the like, you know three decades and that's an example of a decade you know what I mean it's like a sign within a sign <laughs> you know what I mean so uh, with decades so they kind of explain a group of people within a sign a little bit more of course all Capricorns have a similar vibe but Capricorns born in certain degrees kind of flow better and understand each other better than Capricorns of a you know other degrees you get what I'm saying all right so with that being said um you know there are um the decans that we're going to be focusing on um are the Martian decans that's you know ruled by Mars and the Plutonian decans which is ruled by Pluto okay um so I'm gonna kind of like go through them um verbally you know what I mean just so you guys know which you know deck and I'm actually you know speaking on so you guys can get a flip and get a understanding idea of it and then um what I'll do is um I will end up explaining each sign and how it's represented and manifested through that sign okay So, Aries, um, degrees 0 through 9, is ruled by Mars. Um, Cancer, degrees 10 um, 10 through 19, is ruled by Pluto. Um, Leo, degrees 20 through 30, or 20 through 29, excuse me, is ruled by Mars. Um, Scorpio degrees um, 0 through 9 is ruled by Pluto Um, and Sagittarius degrees 10 through 19 is ruled by Mars and lastly Pisces degrees 20 through 29 is ruled by Pluto okay 
So um, if you kind of catch the drift here, the Plutonian decans are kind of water and the um, Martian decans are fire. So you can see that the fire signs have, which is which are masculine signs within themselves, have more of a masculine sex appeal and um, masculine sexiness, while the water signs have more of a feminine sex appeal and feminine sexiness. And again, that doesn't mean that you like a girl <laughs> when it comes to you know if you are like a. Pisces, it's not like you're a girl when it comes to being sexy. Uh, and if you're a woman and you're an Aries, it means that you're a man when it comes to sexy. But, you know, there kind of is not even like um, a submissive and um, not, not like kind of like a submissive type of thing, like when it comes to the water, but it's kind of like a, someone's a giver. It's kind of like giver and taker versus be like giver versus taker type of vibe you know what I mean or a um I'll actually go with the giver and taker example yeah <laughs> that's what I'm gonna go for for now okay <laughs> so um yeah those are the decans now the next segment what I'm gonna do is I'm going to kind of go in more with each of these um, decants, what they mean for that sign specifically and how it's how it'll be manifested, okay? All right. All right, so before I get into the signs, I wanna kinda make a couple of notes to this, okay? Um, number one, this is not the only indicator of sexiness. There are plenty of others, okay? So if you don't have any of these placements and you're a little bit worried and you want to be some sex bot, <laughs> have no fear. It is a possible that, you know, you can display your sexiness in a different way, okay? Um, another thing, too, when I'm explaining these decades um, you know what you would want to focus on is um, it's your sun your moon your rising and your Mars okay now a lot of people may ask like why and I focus on Pluto Pluto is a generational planet Meaning that it moves so slow that it covers a whole generation of planets. So if I were to say, hey, pay attention to Pluto. And if your Pluto's between 0 and 9 degrees Scorpio, then you're sexy. That's like literally years. Like a good, what, maybe 10-ish? Not 10 but it's a, like, that's a long time. Not 10 years, I forced it. That's like maybe a year, maybe two, three um, of people born in that year that are all sexy. Like, Beyonce might have a, a sex appeal to them generally, but it doesn't mean that they, or like, they kind of like this generation kind of um, expresses sexuality in a scorpion, plutonic way. But it doesn't mean personally they are sexy and have sex appeal okay so what I feel will be best for you to look at is if these signs are in your sun moon rising and Mars it actually I'll say look at your Venus too because Venus represents love and even though it's different from Mars it's not that sex drive, that drive in general. Love is included. Usually love is connected with sex. <laughs> if it's love with a you know a person, you know, that's you're interested in. Um, and you're gonna display it. You display sex through your Venus somehow too. You know what I mean? Not as strong as Mars, but you know, love language is respect is um, expressed through sex as well so i'll say look at your venus too but the main ones you want to look at the main 
points of your chart you want to look at is your sun, moon, rising, and Mars. Okay? All right. So, let's get started, okay? Now, I'm going to probably do the fire signs or the Martian decans first, okay? So, Aries. If you have Aries between degree um, 0 and 9 degrees... Uh, excuse me, sorry. If you have Mars between 0 and 9 degrees Aries, then honey, you are sexy. Wow. I can't roll my R's. Let me try that again. Wow. <laughs> right, there you go. Yay. <laughs> All right, so again, if you have Mars and zero between 0 and 9 degrees Aries, then you are sexy. Now, it, Mars in Aries, folks, are quite interesting. They are extremely driven, and when it comes to sex as well, they are easily turned on. They are ready for anything, and they're ready to, like, have fun, ready to um, go and get a task done, ready for sex, just anything that you throw at them, they're ready. Um, Aries represents self. So the thing is, and then Mars also represents self as well. You know, this is actually Aries' is planet. And so this whole kind of like, like, sex appeal and drivenness is very, very important into the this, this energy. Um, they are very focused on self first impressions uh kind of expressing who they are they're their persona first impressions and their appearance so these people they probably look dead sexy um they just have this sexy aura of like a man's man like someone that you just love to just take home at night (laughs) type of feel like they just are truly just like very take charge if if they're a man of course if they're a woman they're kind of like an assertive woman take charge like kind of get things done let's get it kind of (laughs) type of woman you know what I mean very assertive very alpha female and alpha male types have this um second in their sun moon rising on Mars possibly Venus okay now um (laughs) When it comes to sex, yeah, this 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 placement tends to, especially if it's in Mars, if this Deccan is in Mars, um, it, it's quick, fast, in a hurry. They get turned on fast and they're done fast. So if you're not for that feel, this probably is not the best placement. But if you don't mind, you're straight. It's, you shouldn't mind. Well, I. I'm speaking as a Capricorn, so I shouldn't say this, but most people, if you kind of get the job done, how long it is, shouldn't matter. If you kind of get your thrills and make it their thrills, then it's perfect. The issue is, like, sometimes with these folks, um, they don't care if you, you're straight. Not that they don't care if you're straight, but in the moment, they're so focused on self that they kind of forget that you're there a little bit (laughs) but um nothing that a cup like a little conversation can't help but again like these people are sexy through how they just are their persona their personality how they look their first impressions like they shine you know what I mean you see them you're like whoa they just ooze sexuality and they do, they do it not in a kind of, like, quiet way. They kind of do it like, bitch, I am here. Look at me. I'm fine as fuck. And I'm going to win you over. You're going to love it. Just just go ahead. Kind of a little, you know, egotistical. But you're going to like it, though. <laughs> they're just going to take charge. They're going to get things going. They're ready to... They don't play games. Like, they're ready to get shit going. That's how these folks are. Okay? All right, now next is, uh, I'll do Leo. So if you have, um, let me see, sorry y'all. If you have your, um, 
sun moon or rising excuse me let me rephrase my last thing about um aries if you have your sun moon rising mars and venus in aries um degrees um, zero through ten then you are sexy of zero through nine excuse me then you are sexy because you are of a martian decant aries okay to make that clear because i actually said that wrong in the beginning um now next is leo now if you have um leo as a sun moon rising mars possibly venus between 20 and 29 degrees um leo then you are sexy because you are i'm a leo but you have a martian decant leo and you are a martian decant leo okay now these folks um are quite interesting leo <laughs> they are kind of of course you know with the smart energy they are a take charge type of person but they kind of express it in a different way they do take charge but they do it in a way of not like come on let's get this going i'm ready to like have sex with you or i'm ready to marry or whatever they're more of a once they have you they're like showing you off like yes look at this look at my look at my lover aren't they bomb grab their ass kiss them in front of a crowd not caring they are expressive and they're expressive because leo represents self-expression and things that you create so they create you know this relationship they have with you and now they want to show it off like look what i got yeah he or she is fine as fuck huh yep go ahead look at her yeah, look at me suck her face and suck his face you know what i mean like that's how they are they um take charge of like in a way of like of the relationship when it comes to displaying you um they they when they are in a relationship with someone they are so proud and they want to just show them off because they just think they're just so beautiful and lovely and they just want to like show the world how bomb their person is and how proud of them they are um these people also too um because they uh represent self-expression they also represent you know talent so they will probably try to lure someone in through showing their talents talking about their talents expressing their talents or talking about the things that they create expressing the things that create showing you the things that they create like kind of it's kind of like a sales pitch like look what i can do look what i have done don't you want to be a part of the winning team (laughs) that's what kind of reminds me of and they want to know the same about you to see if you fit their whole idea fit their fit the bill for their needs you know what I mean? It's not just about them showing off. It, they want to see what you got. So when they do go out with you, they can be proud. You know what I'm saying? Um. So when this person is sexy, like, their sexiness shows through their self-expression. So they're the type of person that will um, go into the party and steal the party, steal the show. They're the party starter. They're the people the person that people look at and be like wow look at them they're the ones that will like randomly stop playing the piano (laughs) at like a formal party and everyone's just that awe like showing their talents showing the what's what they feel is dope about them so people can see and be at awe like wow this person's fly and they're like yes i know i'm fly yes i'm aware (laughs) and so like this person's gonna be so talented and so fly and so cool that you want to be a part of it you want to know you want people to know that you know them you want to learn from them you want just to be around them because you just respect what they do and how they are and what they give to the world like you just think it's so fly you know what i mean and 
I have Leo moon in a Mars decade and that is very very true in my instance like when someone's talented oh my god like that stills my heart like I just think it's so sexy there's people who are very talented who I really wouldn't go for look wise that all of a sudden I like now because they're just they just they like I don't know like when someone's really good at what they do it's just fly to me it really is I think it's just fly and it definitely adds to the sexiness for sure you know what I mean so this person kind of displays their sexiness through self-expression what makes them special their talents what they give to the world that's how they show their sexiness Reminds me kind of of a renaissance man that just knows how to do everything. Or not even do everything. Because that's more of like Sag. Like Leo's more of a... You know, Sag reminds me of a... um, Someone, like what do they say? Jack of... Jack of all trades, king of none. Or master of none. Like Leo would master theirs. You know what I mean? There's energy with master theirs, okay? Now, lastly, <laughs> Sagittarius. <laughs> now, if you have Sun, Moon, Rising, Mars, possibly Venus, between, in Sagittarius, between 10 and 19 degrees, then, honey, you are sexy because you are Sagittarius. You have Sagittarius and Jupiter in the Martian decade, okay? Now, with this one, um this these people are sexy. <laughs> it's funny. These people are sexy because they kind of have this like sexy professor type of vibe. Their knowledge, their know-how, their experience, their intelligence just turns people on. They're the type of person that have like been there and done that for real they've experienced so much and done so much and can talk to you about what they've learned and it's kind of like oh my god like I want to be a part of your world the thing is about Sagittarius energy though is that you know the reason why they know so much is because they're mutable you know they're a mutable sign of that modality and I'll do a modality um, video soon okay but they're of that modality, so they can jump to one subject, to another, to another. But they're a fire sign as well. And so once the fire burns out, once the well runs dry, they're like, that subject's not fun anymore, they're going to jump to another one. And the same thing will happen there, they'll jump to another one. Like, they're always ready to, you know, experience something new once it gets boring. You know what I mean? And that may be you. They'll experience you. You're cool. But if you don't keep up and if you don't interest them long enough, they'll they'll bounce too. Okay? So, the thing is though is that they, they are just so smart and try to really bring things together and philosophize things that it'll just really really makes you just want to be with them in more ways than one <laughs> you know what I mean um they just they're just fly like they just kind of they learn about things that most people don't really care to learn about. They learn about things that people don't know about. Like, they'll kind of bring you into a whole new world where, like, it would, like a whole new part of the world that you haven't even thought of yet. You know, and so you're just sitting there learning. You remember, you had, people probably had this experience where you had the fine teacher, the dope teacher, and you just want to soak everything up, and they're just so fly, and you want to just be a part of it. Like, that, they, they have that vibe for sure, okay? All right. Now, I've done the Martian Deccans. Now, let's go ahead and do the Plutonian Deccans. Now, again, with the Plutonian energy, this is more of the feminine energy. 
um, feminine sexuality, you know, um, while the Martian energy is more like, come here, motherfucker, I'm going to love you down real quick. I want to just do you. Kind of have that, has that kind of feel. Plutonian is more tantalizing, more seductive. Fuck your mind. You know what I mean? Type of vibe. Um, fuck your mind, fuck your heart, and then we'll really fuck you. You know what I mean? <laughs> they, they, have, they have that type of vibe. Uh, very seductive. Okay? So, let's get with that. Alright? Now, Cancer. Cancer, um, if you have sun, moon, or rising... Uh, Mars, possibly Venus, in Cancer between 10 and 19 degrees, you are sexy because you have Plutonian decades in Cancer, okay? Now, this is a, this is actually a dope-ass decade, okay? Um, (laughs) when I think of Cancer, like, in this specific decade they emotionally kind of gear you into transformation you know what I mean cancer is good at and this is like there's nothing you know nothing wrong with this but cancer is good at emotionally manipulating others now this could be this is that's actually a neutral feeling that could be good or bad you can emotionally manipulate someone to donate to a charity, emotionally manipulate someone to see your point of view, or emotionally manipulate someone to kill someone. So it can just go either way. Manipulation is, you know, quite a neutral thing. But the thing is, they emotionally manipulate you to want them to understand that they want you and they can kind of have this like seductive mind fuck if they don't let their emotions get too involved into the situation. You know what I mean? So with the, with these water signs, they're very psychic. So they can do certain things, read you, read the environment, and then throw off energy so you can read them. And so they'll do certain things. They'll seek how you, this this deck will seek how you're moving and then throw energy over at you so you can catch it. And then, again, emotionally manipulate you to understand what they want and kind of understand what you want to, (laughs) to get things going. You know what I mean? So if you're like a type of person that like, you're really really into say saving animals they'll like find a way to connect with you there and you look into like their eyes and they're like oh my goodness like this I'm really into this person like they can throw that energy at you you know what I mean cancer's really really good at initiating emotions not initiating just their emotions but initiating others emotions as well initiating the environment's emotions all right because the whole initiate thing the cardinal signs cardinal signs are initiators that's what they do all right and they're water and water to do with emotion so that's what the emotional manipulation comes from okay all right so right they they can mind fuck you well maybe even Mm-hmm. He can probably manipulate you emotionally more than a Scorpio because they can push that energy out and make it think that you did. You know what I mean? Like it's they they kind of do it in a sense of like it may it's making their forward they're forward with how they feel um, emotionally, but they can like it's weird like. They're forward with how they feel emotionally. But the thing is, is that seeing them express themselves will make you want to do the same thing. It's wild. 
like it's like see what I'm doing you do this too and they like kind of like seduce you and um, kind of hypnotize you into doing the same thing and you're like wait why am I doing this it's kind of it's wild man it's kind of cool it's really really cool okay but yeah that is the cancer um, again if you're between 10 and 19 degrees cancer sun moon rising Mars possibly Venus then you are sexy okay next is Scorpio now if you are sun moon rising uh, Mars and possibly Venus um, Scorpio between zero and nine degrees and you are sexy because you are of a plutonium decadent within Scorpio okay now this one really when I said like with cancer they can make you feel like you're doing something when you, and you're not even realizing it like they real like this deck can really could do it okay um scorpio represents intimately connecting with others bonding intimately with others so <laughs> they this is how scorpios are psychic through intimately bonding with you they can throw energy at you as well and truly make you feel like you're expressing yourself on your own accord when you're not. They pushed it. They know they can read a room, read an environment as well. You know, it's a water sign thing and push certain buttons secretly to make you feel a certain way. And to kind of make you want to do certain things now instead of being forward with it like cancer they are more secretive with it because it, you know Scorpio all water signs are very sensitive but Scorpios are very sensitive because they really sit and stew with their emotions and they don't want to like put themselves out there and have you not feel the same way so they do things extremely on the slide they're not going to be forward like a cancer with their emotions at all so if they're really really into you how they express their sexiness is through just kind of being kind of like this brooding secretive quiet person that you just like, kind of like a secretive person that's like <sighs> you, you 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 it makes they they kind of they're they're kind of they're secretive and brooding and quiet but they like know how to throw energy and push your buttons to make you want to know more you know what i mean and then you fall into the trap of trying to find more and they feed more information off of you psychically feed more information off for you by you opening up to them because this energy is the energy of secrets so you're opening up to them and then you open up to them they learn more and so they know what makes you take even more they know what turns you on and so they be in this secretive brooding sexy quiet type and you're in the trap already just like that and then they transform your life through intimately bonding with you and intimately bonding with you can be sex intimately bonding with you can be talking and bonding like speaking with each other intimately bonding with you can be going through certain experiences with each other they'll just whatever however y'all bond they will transform you okay um One thing I actually want to add with Cancer too is that with their decade, Pluto decade, they kind of nurture you into transforming, you know, nurture you into like, like making you feel a certain way about them. Um, they're just the person that's around to help. And then you're like, wow, this person's great. 
I'm realizing now that they're sexy and they have this cool sex appeal now I want to get with them. Scorpio are so quiet, so chill, so calm, especially if they have the Plutonian decad and they do things on the low to make you think you felt this, make you think you felt this on your own when it wasn't you at all, it was them. <laughs> All right. All right. So lastly, it's Pisces. Now, if you have Pisces sun, moon, or rising, Mars, possibly Venus, between the degrees of 20 degrees and 29 degrees of Pisces, then you are sexy. Now, these people are sexy through... like kind of like a a ethereal way like they seem so out of this world so different so eclectic so like what the hell is this person (laughs) like are they an alien are they of a different planet and it's extremely intriguing you know what I mean they are they're, you feel like their emotions like kind of go with the wind. Like one moment they're feeling this way, one moment they're feeling the other way, but they kind of still can understand and respect their emotions fully. Um, these people have this kind of like spiritualness to them. And even if they're not like, you know, a, a religious or spiritual person, like they kind of have this otherworldliness to them they seem like a living goddess and yet and you kind of just or a god and you kind of just can't wrap your mind on how they have this essence how you can understand it Uh, a lot of people with pisces energy um or neptunian energy and also with um venusian energy are talented artistically so they you know with with Pluto being the decant ruler they transform you through their art they transform you through what they do um, artistically and art it can be manifested in so many different ways it could be doodling drawing um, painting sculpting singing rapping writing anything you know what I mean anything and so this person's like otherworldliness their fly their their differences their kind of inner god and inner goddesses makes you find makes you feel like they're irresistible and then you get with them and they just bring you into a whole different world and it's just like wow like I can't even think about life without them it's, it's kind of weird <laughs> but it's kind of the, re- the reason of this is because you know it's not only Pluto that's involved with this second ruler Neptune is involved too because that's Pisces planet ruler so you have this big transformation and all these emotions attached but you also have the disillusionment and rose colored glasses and um, bliss of Neptune so you feel just totally out of this world when you're around them and you want them to sweep you into their world and you go ahead and do it (laughs) y'all you will go ahead and do it they have this like cool allure that the top the, the, the how they like kind of bring you in is through their just artistic ways naturally so it could be even how they talk how they like play music how they think of music um, how they critique music or art or anything paint right that's how they kind of drag you in you know what i mean and you're like oh my goodness like I need to be around them Um, so kind of like cancer kind of 
brings you in through nurturing you. Scorpio brings you in by like really connecting with you. So, like they psychically connect with you. And it, it seems like they you've known them for a long time or they've known you for a long time. Um, when y'all just met like a couple of times or even just one day. The Pisces, they're just like essence. They're like God, like our God is like essence. Their, their way of life brings you in. Okay? And with Mars, I could talk about that too. With Mars, you know, um, Deccans, Aries, their like persona, their personality, their appearance, their, you know, they're naturally just sexy. That brings you in with Leo their talents, their, what they bring, what they create, how they show you off brings you in. And then Sagittarius, their way of thinking, their philosophical way of thinking, how they teach you. They're kind of like daddy, you know what I mean? That brings you in, okay? All right, y'all. So this one was a long one, 34 minutes. Um, long segment, but I hope you understand the Martian and Plutonic the Plutonian decans and how it could apply to you now make sure you check the sun moon rising Mars and Venus possibly Venus I would check even your Mercury too because this could be manifested but it's kind of like how you talk sexy you know what I mean if you talk sexy um and your thought process like how you how your thought process kind of oozes out your sex appeal so you can look at your mercury too look at all that shit <laughs> okay all right so let's get over to the last word okay y'all hey y'all this is my last words here for this episode of my bed in astrology where I talk about sexiness and sex appeal now just like with Venus you know you can be beautiful with Venus the Venus places I mentioned before but if the you know you got some weird aspects then you know you will probably be charming instead, which will show your inner beauty. And same with this, play with these placements, with the Martian and Plutonian placements. You know, you definitely can manifest physically, can manifest physically, and you're dead sexy. Um, but, and you can be sexy in two different ways. You can be more of the. Um, extroverted sexy with the Martian decans or the introverted sexy with the Plutonian decans but you know again if you have any weird aspects you know it may not you may not be sexy physically but you have like a sex appeal um, something that kind of something that brings comes out from inside of you that exude sexiness and it makes you sexy even though you may not look the part physically but the thing point that I really want to make is that decans are extremely important um decans can separate the different types of people within the sign um, and then degrees will do that even more if you kind of go degree by degree but decans can definitely expose that and show that strongly how one person one Aries might be different from another Aries and it's all about the ruler of that decant you know what I mean so for instance say if you know you don't have any of the Venusian Martian or Plutonian decants you have more of a Neptunian decant you know, Neptune folks are known for being amazingly artistic, you know? So, and then, like, moon folks, they're known for being, you have a moon deck, and you're just extremely nurturing and loving, 
and emotionally can connect with others. Like, you're, you know, there's so many ways this could be manifested and expressed that, you know, if you're not, don't have a sexy, um, decant or a sex appeal decant, or you don't have a beauty and charm decant, that you can show your beauty in other ways. Like I mentioned before, this is not the only way you can see if someone's sexy. The only way you can see if someone is um, beautiful um, or have sex appeal or charming. But it's definitely um, a prevalent, very strong way of seeing those two things, okay? Um, But have no fear if you do not have these decans. And if you feel like this is not expressed to you physically through your appearance you have other decades that are just as awesome that can show your inner beauty and your inner talents okay all right so um yeah that this was fun this was very fun i really enjoyed this um i did talk about beauty but i might do a part two or excuse me, part three of this, where I talk more about body parts. (laughs) Kind of like body types and shit. I think I might do that, because it's kind of like a part two. I might do a a part three when I get more into that. Um, But this was really fun. I like to do it. This series is... I I have both decant, like both a Venusian decant and this... And actually, a Martian Deccan. I don't have any Plutonian Deccans, though. But I have a Martian Deccan and a Venusian Deccan um, within my Sun, Moon, Rising, and Mars, and Venus, or whatever. Not all of them, but one of those planets. One or two, three, maybe. But, um, so I find these, this really, really fun. Um, and I definitely enjoy it. So, if you have any other suggestions at all, um, hit me up for sure. it would be quite fun to um, talk about if you want to get more into decades and how they expressed and all that, okay? Um, as always, feel free to hit me up. You can hit me up in so many different avenues, and I'm about to express them all now. Um, give me up on email, 7thHighEntertainment at gmail.com. That's the number 7, T-H-H-I-G-H-E-N-T at gmail.com. Okay. Um, also, um, you can hit me up on Twitter. My name is, my name, first name, backwards and front words. I-M-M-I-D-D-I-M-M-I. Um, But if you type Astro Dim, you can probably find me on Twitter as well. My Instagram name is the underscore Astro Dim. That's T-H-E underscore A-S-T-R-O-D-I-M. Hit me up there. Um, And my YouTube is Astro Dim 7. Now, I'm starting to upload my podcast on youtube as well okay so you can definitely look forward to looking at that um eventually um what i'm gonna do is have like show actually myself doing the podcast talking with y'all and shit you know what i mean um because right now what i have is just like a picture while i'm talking on youtube i'm gonna kind of like show myself talking with you guys and everything um once I kind of have more of a following and all that and I can interact with you guys live I'll do that it'll be so much fun I'll so love that okay um also I have an Etsy shop called Astro Dim I have yo I'm about to like you're gonna hear some clicks motherfucker cause I wanna tell you about these reports I got baby okay um so many cool reports i have available for you guys um let me show let me like i said show you can't see let me talk about them to you guys okay um
Okay, so I have moon readings where I talk about the full moon, new moon. And I can talk about both. And we have a Sagittarius moon popping up soon. So definitely, y'all, if you're interested to know what this month has in store for you, what you should be manifesting, um, what you should be looking forward to for this month, hit me up. Okay, and feel free to purchase the moon readings. I also have questions where you could just ask me a question and I'll use astrology to answer it. No when questions, please, because I think well, my philosophy is that we have free will. So whenever the when, you can make it happen at any time you want. You can pause it, start it get it going so no win questions but all the other questions you got hit me up and i could be able to find what's up with it through astrology okay i also have composite readings which is a relationship reading where you merge both of y'all energies together into one and it comes to one chart you know i also do sinistry readings where i compare two different charts you know your chart and the person you're interested in chart and i talk about y'all's chart and you know talk about and compare the aspects you guys got between each other i love doing science 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 it's really fun um i also have my lilith report you know i talked about lilith with you guys so you can have an understanding of your personal uh, experiences with suppression revenge and transmuting that energy um i also do 12 um, tarot readings with using astrology which is kind of ill right i do a 12 house spread so it'll be 12 cards representing each of the houses it's really fun to do i love doing those so it's a 12 house astro tarot card reading spread very very fun of course i do natal chart readings those are extremely fun to do too i recently put two more readings up um career vocation path reading where i talk about um personal um, ideas that you have about your career or vocation if you're a little bit confused and want to kind of have a better understanding of what you should do for your career and i also have life path readings Spark, exploding your nodal influence where I talk about your north node and south node and how you can understand your life path lastly I have a solar return report now solar return reports is you basically your birthday this year is the beginning of your year and it ends the um, day before your birthday next year okay and so what it does it takes a snapshot of when the sun is in the exact spot it was from when you were born um and it looks at the sky and the sky can basically tell you how your year is going to end up being um these are extensive readings long readings typically 120 dollars from my um Astro um, shop in on Etsy, uh, but for Gemini's and Gemini's only, I'm giving y'all 50% off. It's gonna be $60 for Gemini for Gemini season. So once Gemini season's done, we're gonna move on to Cancer, and they'll have a 50% off. But right now, Gemini's, you have 50% off solar return reports. All right. So, don't miss out on it, okay? Alright, love. So, that's what I got for today. I hope you enjoyed this. And I hope you have a beautiful, lovely, long weekend. Beautiful, lovely, long Memorial Day weekend. God bless the people who gave up their lives for my life. Gave up their lives for my people's lives. My ancestors' lives. My... Ugh, my children's lives, my the next generation. Thank you for all that serves this country. I love you all. God bless and peace.
podcast you just heard was recorded with Anchor. If you want to make your own, download the Android or iOS app completely free from anchor.fm slash podcast. That's anchor.fm slash podcast.